one thing is will you just focus on him tonight? You know, I bet your focus has been on a lot of things this week. I bet just life in general has asked of you to focus on me and focus on this and focus on them. And tonight, right now, I want you to right now just close your eyes and focus. Set your affection, your heart, and your attention on him. Father, that's what we do right now. Our eyes are on you. And we thank you for your presence here, even this moment. You are Lord of our hearts. You are Lord of this place. In Jesus' name. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Yes, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free. But he brought me
stolen you brought back to us thank you Jesus oh victory you have won victorious you have come what was stolen you brought back to
just thank him tonight. what you poured out. It was your love. You poured it out on us. Let's just thank him for his love tonight. singing highest praises cause you're so
Singing hallelujah, we join with all of heaven. Singing hallelujah, we join with all of heaven. Singing.
just our voices tonight. Singing highest praises to you, God. We're singing highest praises. Just let him speak to you right now. shout it out from the mountain top that our God is good. He has overcome. Let all the earth, every tribe and tongue, we will sing his praise. He has overcome. champion. Oh, he is our champion tonight, isn't he? <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you so much, Lord, for what you have done for us. Thank you so much for what you have done. 
thank you for who you are. Thank you, champion. Can we sing that, Jim? This is how I fight my battle. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. With This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles with praise. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. On your table, God. Cause this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I find my battles with praise. This is how I win my battles. This is how I win my battles. This is how I win my battles with praise. Yeah. I know we win. God, make sure we win. Oh, in the end, we always win. Yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Do you believe that tonight? It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by your truth. It may look I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by your power. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Jesus. It may look like I'm going to drown, but I'm surrounded by you, oh God. It may look like I am drowning, but oh, I know the truth, Jesus. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. This is how I win my battles. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win every battle. At your feet, oh God. This is how I win. This is how we win. that you have caused us to triumph in Christ Jesus, that in him we are more than conquerors. We are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Thank you, champion, for fighting and winning the battles for us and for handing us your victory. And I thank you, Lord, that you are teaching us showing us, instructing us, leading and guiding us every day more and more to know this truth so that we can live victoriously in this life, not defeated, not as a victim, not in fear and t intimidated by people or the lies of the enemy or circumstances, but Lord, you are showing us as your body, as your church, as your people, as your army, how to rise above and begin to see ourselves through your eyes and to begin to see circumstances from your perspective. Father, we are seated far 
above all principalities and powers and rulers of this world, for we are seated in Christ in heavenly places. And I thank you, Lord, for opening our heart and our eyes to know this truth so that we can begin to live from this place of victory in every area of our lives. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Can we all say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I knew it was going to be powerful even without a full band. Amen. <laughs> God's presence shows up when we're in our bedroom praising him, right? I mean, it doesn't matter if we have a full band or if we've got all the bells and whistles. His power is present to heal and to do all that he intends to in this room tonight. Amen? Amen. Well, why don't you take a second and greet someone around you tonight. Let them know that they are loved and welcomed. And in two minutes, we will have our service host up here to greet us tonight. everybody. Time's up and everybody's still talking, but that's okay. That's good. Hi, my name's Chandra. I'm your service host tonight as well as offering host. I'm going to do both. I don't have my phone or Bible up here, so Pastor Joe, can you find me the scripture? Thanks. <laughs> uh, so welcome to all of our first time guests. Can I see, is there anybody who it is your first time here tonight? Oh, wow, awesome. How exciting. That seriously is awesome. Thanks for braving the snow and coming out and checking us out. Um, so after our service, we have a little sign back there that says meet our pastors. Pastor Joe and Pastor Tessa will go back there, and you can meet them, get to know them. They would love to meet you. Um, also, we have our new guest central area. It's in the main foyer, and so that's where you can get a connection card and fill out, or there's a connection card next to you to fill out. Um, but they're also back there. Um, as well as a little gift bag for you. Yeah, that's where you can ask questions or anything like that. Um, there you go. If you've never filled out a connection card, we just appreciate you doing that. Um, we like to just keep in touch with you, bless you, get to know you even better. So I'm going to remind all of our faithful volunteers who couldn't make it to our ne October next steps, please make plans to attend tomorrow. That's Sunday at 11 a.m. at the base camp. So if you need more details, see either Tara or pastors for that. And then please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
and we post pictures, information, encouragement on there. Um, so just stay connected if you have that. Follow us. We would love, um, love for that. And then I'm also going to be doing the offering. So <laughs> there's three ways to give. <laughs> Praise God. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and could you pull up a scripture for me? So um, there's three ways to give. You can text Freedom CO to the number on the screen. There's a giving envelope next to you. You can either write card information, put a check, put cash in that, or you can also go to freedomchurchco.com. Oh, thanks. Co.com, and that is where you can press the give button and give there. All right. Amen. So I'm just going to share the scripture. It's in 2 Corinthians 8, 9. It says, For you've experienced the extravagant grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was infinitely rich, he impoverished himself for our sake, so that by his poverty we could become rich beyond measure. So it says his extravagant grace, through extravagant grace we can experience, um, become rich beyond measure. And because of that, we've become rich in uh, in time, we have time, we have talents, we have gifts, we have money, and with having that, we have the ability to sow that back. So that's also to our volunteers. Thank you for that. I believe God's really going to restore that back to you, and he, he's honored by that, and um, I believe that's going to come back to bless you as well as your finances tonight. If you're sowing that, the Lord took it all. He wants you to be uh, wealthy. He wants you to have money. He wants you to be rich in um, joy and in all the fruits of the Spirit as well as anything that we tangibly can have on this earth. So I'm just going to pray for you guys. Lord, I thank you for everyone here. I thank you for the opportunity um, to just sow, God. Because of you becoming poor, we can be rich. We can have things. We can have all of these things and, and be a blessing with that. And so I thank you for the opportunity. And I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing every person here um, who's come, who's um, uh, giving back their time to them, giving back money to them from what they've sown, and it's not that we do that to get, but we give because we've been given it all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And Pastor Joe and Pastor Tessa. How's everybody doing? <laughs> there it is, thank you. Chandra, while you were doing offering, I heard the Lord say, he is so proud of you. And he wanted me to tell you. Can we get, he is so proud of you. And I know you know what that means. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So thank you guys for coming out. Thank you, Lord. Um, we are going to begin a new series called Thankful. Ooh. I thought, you know, it's November. A lot of people are thinking about Thanksgiving, right? So, um, and I just think it's a good reminder. It's so easy in life to get busy and just doing good things, but uh, just kind of forget some things and not be thankful for a lot of the things that God is doing in our lives. Anybody experience that? <laughs> yeah, or am I the only one? <laughs> our... Um, our, verses, our, our key scripture that we're going to use for this series is from Psalms chapter 118, and it's verses 19 through 21. Open for me the gates where the righteous enter, and I will go in and thank the Lord. These gates lead to the presence of the Lord, and the godly enter there. I thank you for answering my prayer and giving me victory. How many of you know we have the victory? Amen. We're not we're not trying to get it. We have it. So we need to be thankful at all times in all things. Thankfulness is a gate into God's presence and victory for the righteous according to that Amen. scripture and that is all of us in this room, all of us that are born again. Um you know and when we are when we are seeking God and walking in his will that, that includes us, amen? When you're ungrateful, it can cause you to be anxious and hinder you from hearing God's voice clearly. 
and receiving the victory that you desire in your life. Has anybody ever been unthankful? I mean, it, well, I'm not condoning it, but but I'm telling you, it is it is easy to slip into that if if we're in a challenging situation or or things aren't going exactly the way that we want things to be going. Um, isn't it funny? We can have the one the one thing that's causing some issues in life, but the 99 are good, and our eyes are off of the 99. Our eyes are off of God, and our focus is on. Uh, the situation that we're that we're dealing with, and through this four weeks of this series, I hope that we are all, including myself, just reminded that God is good. He is faithful all the time. He has an amazing plan for our lives, and regardless of sometimes some of those funny things that can happen that we weren't expecting, that challenging moment or minutes or days or weeks sometimes, that God is awesome. You know, the awesome thing is he knows the end from the beginning. He's not surprised by it, right? He's got it. He's made a way of escape. Again, we are, we are victorious regardless of what the situation looks like. We've got to keep our focus on him. We always need to hear from God when he's speaking to us, but especially when we're in one of those challenging situations so that we know that we are making the right decision. Sometimes in those situations, we can react instead of respond. In other words, we can just do, do, just make a crazy decision instead of stepping back for just a moment, taking a look at the situation, looking at God, talking to God, looking at His Word, and hearing clearly from Him what it is that we need to do in that time instead of reacting. Amen? It's, I react sometimes, and it's like, you know, I think, I, and I think I've gotten better to say, okay, hang on just a second, yeah. but sometimes, man, you can just, just react out of some sort of an emotion instead of just saying, just taking a step back again and just saying, God, what do I need to do right here? What are you trying to do, God? What, you know, sometimes we don't need to do anything other than trust Him. Other times, we do, we need some direction from Him. And he's not withholding it from us, but we've got to make sure that our focus is on him and we're not, we're not acting crazy. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Psalm 104 through 5. It's quiet in this place tonight. <laughs> <laughs> They're cold. I'm telling you, man, this is, it's such a good reminder. When I, when I was putting this series together, I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Psalms 104 through 5. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. This doesn't say enter his gates with thanksgiving only when everything's going right. It just says enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Verse 5, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and ever, and his faithfulness continues forever. To each generation. So whatever generation you came from, you are not forgotten. Oh, come on. Every generation. I'm, I, I love this scripture. This scripture changed my life, but Romans 2, 4, it's the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. Man, when we, when that, when that makes it this 18 inches or so from our head to our heart, that is so life-changing. It is so life-changing. For over 23 years now, I've been the recipient of his continued faithfulness, although there have been times when it felt like he had forgotten me. Has God ever forgotten any of us? But our feelings are so fickle sometimes, aren't they? But, man, we, we, are, we, are, not, we are not moved by our feelings, and, and I believe that feelings are obviously given to us from God, but they're, they're to be a positive thing in our life. But sometimes, depending, on, again, on the circumstances and the situation, our feelings are not lining up with what God is saying about us or our circumstances. And, that's, and, and it's at that place where we have to make sure when we open this, 
that what we are saying is God's word and what God says about us in our life, whether it's whether things are going perfectly or things are a little bit crazy at the moment. Amen. There's even been times when it seemed like God was doing things in my wife's life and not mine. Anybody been jealous of their spouse before? <laughs> uh, Only because you're way cuter than me. But. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, because you're way taller than me. Than <laughs> let's, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. And look at verse 11. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, you are united with Christ. Amen. We have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance. And he, listen to this, who makes everything work out according to his plan? He does. Sometimes I try to make everything work, a, work out according to my plan. How many, have we, how many of us have done that? I mean, and I, I don't think it's like uh, intentional, but the end result, whether it's intentional or not, is still the same. It's, it's never good. It's e- even, if, even if it seems like it's working out okay, is our plan for our lives ever going to be better than God's plan yeah. for our lives? <laughs> It is God's responsibility to make everything work out according to his plan, not ours. So I really believe that God spoke to me and told me I would get hired at the church that Tess and I were attending and had already been hired at in Ohio. Is anybody in this place impatient? (laughs) But as day after day, week after week, and month after month went by, I still wasn't offered a job. But I made a decision regardless, seriously, this was tough, to stay thankful. And sometimes it was hour by hour. This was the first time since, um, so when when Tess and I moved from Tulsa to Ohio, I I had taken a job either at the age of 12 or 13 throwing newspapers. And when we moved there, this was the first time that I had not been working doing something to earn money from 13 to, I don't know, 40 or whatever I was at that time. And she would continually say, enjoy the time off. We were at a place where where her income that she was making from this church was. Bringing was, home the bacon. She was bringing home the bacon, and and I didn't even have to work at this time. Although I wanted to work there, I believed I was supposed to work there. It wasn't my, me making an income was not a need in our lives, but I was struggling so badly with being thankful hour by hour sometimes and, and, and enjoy and enjoy my life. And she would continually encourage me, enjoy this time. It, it may never happen again, right? Right. So, um... My focus obviously was getting off of God, and and but finally nine months later, how many of you? Nine months later. Wait, you met, you left out. I have to tell on him. Oh, <laughs> I always, I always tell on myself, but this one is too good not to tell because it'll encourage you guys that even if you, okay. So here's here's the deal. So during that time, he was doing so good as far as like. Sometimes, I'm not kidding, this is so precious, I would come home and he would just be in another room just pouring his heart out to God, just saying, God, thank you that you have a good plan for me and you haven't forgotten about me. And just, I mean, I watched him go through this almost year of worth of time where he didn't understand why, you know, um, his job hadn't come through yet. And the whole time I'm telling him, babe, just enjoy the time off. Go do some fun things. Relax. Sleep in. I don't even think he knew what the word sleep in <laughs> meant. That's why we're really big on the hashtag thing that we have with Freedom Church, hashtag sleep in Sundays, because he has learned over the years how to actually sleep in and not get up yep. at five or, or whatever. So, but during that time, he just couldn't stand it any longer, and he took a job at Cintas. Do you guys know what Cintas is? 
it's a uniform company. Like they they provide uniforms I for people about this. that do cleaning or um, other things, but uniforms. And <laughs> I remember when he told me I have an interview, and I was like, "Are you sure you're supposed to do this?" And he I was, was going like, to make my plan work out. So he took this job at CentOS, and like. I don't even know, three days into it, what he had to do was carry like these just stacks and stacks of uniforms on these hangers and stuff. And he was, you know, by piles of it, having to take it into buildings and then pick up their dirty ones and all this. So he was doing all this heavy lifting and stuff. And I remember he came home one night and he was like, I have totally <laughs> missed it. <laughs> Tore a tendon in my like, elbow. Oh, man, that? that was brutal. Oh, yeah, I tore, tore a tendon in my elbow. It was. it was brutal. He tore a tendon in his elbow, and, and then he couldn't even do it anyway. And I was like, <laughs> um, I wonder if you were supposed to take that job. So anyway, I remember him even saying it was my Ishmael. Like, he, he knew that God had something I've for had him, but he was just going to make something happen. Because, that, you know, and I get his heart and his, his um, motive was, you know, I'm a man. The Bible says if I don't work, I don't eat. And if I don't provide for my family, I'm worse than an infidel and all those things. And you know what? The devil can even take scripture and twist it because I believed and even I think he believed what God was telling him is, rest in me, son. I've got you. Everything's working out according to my plan and my timing. I've got you. So rest and just relax in, in me. And it was hard for him. And I'll say this to guys or girls. We know we, a lot of times we can get our value or even our identity can be wrapped up in yep. our job and in what we do. God wants all of his kids to only have one major thing that we're all wrapped up in, and that's that our identity is in him, that we're a child of his, and that he bought and purchased us with his life's blood so that we could live a life that he originally planned for us to live. And now, however that is, we've got to get to a place where, Lord, if this is what, like, I remember cleaning toilets for nine months, almost a year, I worked at a church that had, I swear, 350 toilets. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but <laughs> it was a huge church, and there was, like, five bathrooms, and they were, like, rows and rows of toilets, <laughs> and so for nine months straight, I was cleaning those toilets, but I had determined and I told the Lord over and over again as I walked into those bathrooms every night. While I was in Bible school during the day, at night I'm cleaning toilets. And I was like, I'll do this forever. I'll do this as long as you say, and I will do it unto you. And then I found out, well, this is also a huge blessing. I'm probably getting ahead. I'm so sorry, babe. But the, the coolest thing was that job that I had cleaning those toilets wasn't even about me. My nephew, who had just moved into town, and I, and I was getting ready to get a different job and be transferred, and, but I, I, I kept a good heart and attitude the whole time, and I knew it was time for me to move on, and God had opened another door for me, and they needed someone to replace me, and my nephew needed a really good job under really great mentors and to be part of a healthy team, and the Lord showed me when he, because I talked to a few people that I built relationship with, they were like, yeah, have him come in and, and interview. And he worked there for three years after me. And people just invested and sowed and poured into his life as a young man learning work ethic and all those, you know, adult stuff. And the Lord showed me your obedience and your great heart and attitude. What, it was for Anthony that I needed you there. So, man, sometimes there might be a season or a chapter in our life where we're, we've turned every page. We've looked back and forth like, I can't find what in the world I'm doing here. It makes no sense. I don't understand it. It's because it's probably not even about you. It's about somebody else. Amen? Well, and during Amen. that time that, that I had, and like she said, you know, our identity can come from other things instead of, instead of God, but I was there for three weeks, but I went in on a, on a Wednesday morning, and I told my boss, I, I'm Friday's it, and um, he tried to get me to stay, but I said no, but um, 
it wasn't probably three or four hours later, I got a call on my cell phone, and it was the church that she was employed at, and it was the person that uh, did the interviews and stuff um, called me and asked me to come in for an interview. And I just, I think that, just talk about God's goodness and his grace, even in the, even when I uh, messed up, you know, but then when I, then when I repented and said, okay, God, this is, you know, I'm, I'm finished. Man, a few hours later, that the phone call. Day. So I don't, I don't think it was a, was a uh, coincidence. So in 2014, I believe, again, that God had spoke to me and told me I would be hired at the church where we were attending and Tessa had been hired at. And but again, day after day, week after week, month after month, I was not offered a job, but I may, I just, man, has anybody else been challenged like this? I just had to continually make a decision to be grateful, to be thankful. God, thank you that I'm right where I'm at that I'm working, and, and at that time, I actually was working. Um, I had such a good job, too, but it wasn't what I wanted. I, I, was, I loved sales. I was in sales. I got a great car allowance. All my gas was paid for. I had a great salary, plus com I was uh, paid commissions. My, my income was awesome, but it wasn't what I wanted. And this, this, by the way, is a different church he's talking about right now. So there's the one in Ohio. Now this is one in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Somehow I always got hired at churches. I don't know why. <laughs> and, then he, and, I, and we always knew that God had called us to be a team as far as in ministry. But for whatever reason, it always seemed to take a little bit longer for them to hire him. And so we were always, what, but we did learn our lesson that first time. We did. Awesome. Yeah. You were much better Stay the second thankful. time around. <laughs> so, that, you know, ha, have you ever been in a place, you know, this th this can be healthy, but sometimes we do need to say if if, if some things aren't going right in our lives, it, it, is, it can be healthy if done in the right way to say, okay, God, is, am I causing any of this? Is there something that I need to change in my life? Am, am I making this situation difficult? But if you know that you are doing what God wants you to do, you are walking down that path that he is, that he is responsible for making everything work out, and you're doing exactly what you know you need to be doing. If you've done that, just let God work it out. Just stay grateful. Stay thankful. Keep your focus on him. That's, that's where I can have such a struggle at times is, seeing the circumstances and, and getting my focus off of him. And I'm a fixer, so I want to try to fix everything. Anybody else like that? Just to make it, I think, I think to try to fix it, to make the situation go, to way, go away, to make this end more quickly so I can get on with the next thing. <laughs> you know, I'm wired a little bit tight, and that's okay. I mean, it's, it's, my, it's my personality. Just a but bit. <laughs> You know, we cannot use the per our God-given personalities to circumvent what he wants to do in our lives and make everything happen ourselves. Amen? <laughs> oh, man, you are something else. So, stay thankful. You, you know, in... I in, didn't say a thing. You all are my witness. Nothing. Okay, but, but this is the other thing. Kind of like you were talking about, so much of the time what God is doing in our life may not be completely about us. Right. And so regardless, we've got to stay thankful. But in that time, and I was selling cutting tools, so I'm going into these machine shops, and these are, can be some very rough environments, some pretty rough guys working in these places. But you know what? I, I was being given an opportunity from God to be a light in a world of darkness, day in and day out, day in and day out. And um, I, I ended up getting, there were, there were times when I, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm at work, so I'm not going in and talking about Jesus, but just as you build these relationships, conversations start happening and they find out that you go to church, that you're born again. They, you know, you, they, they learn things about you, but I was that guy on several different occasions where when I came into a shop one day. Somebody was going through something difficult, and I would actually get to pray with people in inside of these rough places. So, 
again, it's, it's being thankful. It's keeping our focus on God and um, just allowing him to do what it is that he wants to do in our lives. Amen. And the other amazing thing that happened, and actually you guys will get to meet him in January. January. A young man named Russell. What's his last name? Yoder. Yoder. Russell Yoder. Um, Joe started to build a relationship with this young man who worked in one of the shops that he would go to. And um, they are like cut out of the same cloth. This young man is just wired up tight and he's just a go-getter and just like they just clicked. Well, this, where he was working, though, there was a lot of dysfunction in this machine shop and all this stuff, and he just started confiding in Joe, and then before you knew it, and, and also he had been born again, but he had walked away from the Lord and kind of was just doing his own thing, and nothing was working out well in this young man's life, and so Joe had the opportunity to just start planting a seed of, you know, man, you know that the God has a good plan for your life, and and he'll show you what to do about all these things. And and uh, pretty soon they started praying together. Russell gave his life back to the Lord, totally sold out, just on fire, focused on the path that God had for him. And long story short, this young man is um, changing the world where he is at, changing the Amen. people and the atmosphere and the world that he's in in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, beautiful wife and family in ministry and even wants to start um, a satellite campus at some point of Freedom Church in Tulsa. But he's going to be here in January just to share how God has just transformed his life. But during that time that Joe was like, I know this is not like my landing place. And God was like, I've got you. Stay faithful. Be thankful he would not have had the opportunity to sow in that man's life. And I don't know that, I mean, God would obviously send someone else, but he got to be the one. And this, and this young man even calls him, one, you know, his father in the faith. And so, again, realizing that everything in life doesn't revolve around us, our comfort, our, you know, ease. And it's all about, you know, if we're having fun or not. You know, come on, that sounds like a little baby brat. <laughs> so, I mean, now God wants us to enjoy our life, but as far as, you know, when we find ourselves in situations that we have to take a step back, and, and I love what Pastor Joe said about humility will say to God, Lord, everything feels wrong, it seems wrong, doesn't make sense, is there something I need to change? Am I, am I thinking wrong? Am I, is my perspective wrong? That's true humility. But then when you just keep moving forward and you have peace and you realize God's saying, no, I've got you right here for a purpose, then, man, you just, you just walk on in joy knowing that God never does anything for no reason. Not in your life, not in anyone else's. He's got a purpose and a plan, and it's usually people behind everything he does in our lives because he loves his people. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, actually, Russell, that she's talking about, he's going to come speak in January. But the, just the amazing things that God has done in his life. Amen. And for January, I just, you know, it's the beginning of a new year. And I believe that he would just be uh, a huge encouragement to every single one of us. But um, I'm going to end with this. The, um, the job that I had selling cutting tools, he actually took my place oh, okay. when I got hired at that church. And then He's gone on to another place he's been with for about a year and a half, but out of um, the, the place he works for is kind of like a Walmart of cutting tools. And out of, uh, I think, around 600 employees, he w him and uh, five or six other guys were asked to speak at a, a huge conference that they had because of what God has done in his life. And the, and, and the sales that he has had has just been absolutely amazing. And he gives all the glory and all the credit to God, so um, he doesn't doesn't try to take any of it. But yeah, it's just amazing. So yeah, so staying thankful. Are you guys encouraged tonight to just stay thankful? Stay the course, Amen. even if it doesn't make sense, even if life doesn't seem perfect. Like oh, but if I just was here, things would be better. Or if I could just get that, then I'd be happier. Don't believe the lie of the enemy about that in your life. 
No, just be planted right where you are and say to the Lord and in your own heart, Lord, I will do this faithfully as long as you say. And you're the one who promotes and exalts. That's the word. Amen. Amen. You guys can leave. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you so much for this evening. Father, I thank you for every single person in this room and all the things that you have in your heart for them. Lord, I thank you that they choose to allow the fruit of the Spirit to um, come forth in their hearts and their lives, whether it's patience or even just trusting you, being faithful, God, but that where you've got them, Lord, they can rest assured that you have not forgotten them. You are right there with them, Lord, that the steps of the righteous are, in fact, ordered by you. You lead and guide them every step of their lives, Father. And even when we get off track or when we fall down or miss it, Father, you are all about restoration and redemption. So, Father, I just speak that over every life and into every dream and destiny in every heart, that, Father, the dreams and the destinies that are of you shall come to pass in their lives, in your way, and in your timing. So, Father, we just commit our hearts, our days, and our times into your hands. And we will trust you, and we will stay grateful and thankful for who you are in our lives, Lord. Thank you that the plans that you have for us, they are good, not to harm us, but to give us hope and an amazing future. That's your promise, Lord, and we believe you. We believe the words you've spoken shall come to pass. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we want to take just one more opportunity before we ever uh, close our services to, if there's anyone in here who's never received Christ as their Savior, never given your heart or life to Him or surrendered your future, your will to Him, and you want to do that tonight, we have prayer ministers on both sides of the platform here that want to pray with you. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit and you say to yourself, I just know there's something missing, I feel like there's there's something I'm missing out on. The Bible says that when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're clothed with power from on high. And I believe part of that is you are empowered to walk out your destiny in victory, not failure, not defeat, but in joy and in victory. And if you want to receive that gift tonight, I ask that you would come see our prayer ministers and not leave before you are prayed with. Or if you need healing or anything else, any other need in your life, we are here to, pl to pray with you and agree with you in faith. Amen. All right. God bless all of you. Again, thank you so much for coming out tonight. And we're going to be giving lots of pizza away. So if you want a box or two of that pizza, you are welcome to take some home for the rest of the weekend. And we love you guys. And we'll see you back out next week. God bless. And we'll see some of you at Next Steps tomorrow, 11 o'clock. We love you all.